Here is a new piston ring. And I'm going to insert it into the cylinder wall to check the ring gap. Use a piston to push it flat and evenly. There you can see a small gap. You will use a filler gauge in measuring the gap. This is done to make sure that the ring gap is in the correct spec. If the ring gap is too small, then that could make the piston ring fit too tight because when metal heats up, metal parts expands. That can cause serious damage to the cylinder or worse, engine failure. If the gap is too large, it can cause loss of pressure in the combustion chamber and burn engine oil. You can sand the end of the rings to decrease the material and increase the gap. I will be using a piston ring pliers in removing the old piston rings. Then, I need to clean the grooves of the piston using a brass wire brush. Spray some cleaner and lightly brush the grooves to remove dirt and rust. After that, I will now clean the whole piston assembly with some soapy water. Dry it properly and now we can install the new piston rings. This is the top ring. The second ring. And last, the oil ring. Take note that I've already measured the gap and sanded each of the rings to keep it in the correct spec. The old piston ring is corroded with rust. And this is the new piston ring. This is the old oil ring which is built in one piece. And the new ones are separated. First, I will install the oil ring. It is composed of oil spacer and two piston rings, rails or expander. When you install piston rings, the surface with an embedded letters or code should be placed above. Install the second ring and the top ring. Make sure the rings can move freely. Before installing the piston into the engine, remember that the piston rings should be placed in an X position pattern. The first piston rail of the oil ring is placed on the 8 o'clock position. Second rail is placed on the 2 o'clock position. Second ring is placed on the 4 o'clock position. Top ring is placed on the 10 o'clock position. This is a crucial process to prevent any leaks from the combustion chamber. Before I install the piston into the engine, I need to assemble the engine first. 
I will return each part accordingly. This washer is for the governor gear, along with this small plastic cap. This rod is for the gear and arm of the governor. Put some oil into the shaft and insert it. Don't forget the washer in between. Insert the color pin so it won't fall off. I will temporarily put the arm in place. Next is the oil level switch. An O-ring is placed on this spot. This is the old O-ring, and this is the new one. Put the new O-ring. Then reinstall the oil level switch. Tighten all fasteners. Put some oil into the bearing journals of the crankshaft. Carefully insert the crankshaft. Make sure it spins freely and smooth. Clean the cylinder wall. Put some oil into the cylinder wall. As well as the piston assembly. Use a piston ring compressor to compress the rings. Carefully place it into the cylinder wall. Then tap the piston to push it through. Once you inserted it, make sure that the piston rod is properly placed into the crankshaft. Then reinstall the cap. Insert the two 10mm bolts and tighten it. Follow the torque specs given on the screen. Put some oil into the valve lifter before you install it into the engine. Set the crank on top dead center before you install the camshaft. On this gear, there is a small dot. And on the camshaft, there is a big dot. Put some oil into the cams before you insert it. Then gently insert it. Make sure those two dots match. 
when those two dots are aligned, it means that the engine is at the top dead center and it is in correct timing. Just keep on putting some oil on places where metal to metal contacts. Here are some set of new gaskets. Don't forget to insert the double pins. Put the new gasket in place. I left the second double pin on the cover because it is stuck. Put the cover back on. Tap it so it would sit evenly into the engine. Put all of the bolts and tighten it. Here's the required torque spec for the crankcase cover. Siding starts at the center and do an X pattern. These two oil seals are the same and will be installed on each side. Reinstall the rear cover for the generator head. Put the new oil seal in place and insert it. Reinsert the cap and dipstick. Now it's time to assemble the engine head. Put the spring and retainer in place. Push it and lock it in place. Don't forget to put the small metal piece on the ends of the valve stem. Install the valve rod. Lubricate the ends and insert it into the valve lifter. Insert the two double pins. Put the new head gasket in place. Carefully put the engine head.
Make sure the develop rods are placed correctly. Insert and tighten the four bolts in the X pattern. Here is the required torque spec for the cylinder head bolt. And that's it for today's video. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you very much for watching and God bless.